The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Welcome to the Benjamin Dixon Show. I am your host, Benjamin Dixon. Today is Monday. It is March 23rd, 2020. We are in the midst of a global pandemic as well as um, an economic crisis here in the United States. And in the midst of this all, our leadership, both political parties, both Democrats and Republicans, um, have demonstrated an inability, a complete and total inability to provide solutions in one of our most dire circumstances that this country has ever faced. It is estimated that unemployment will get to 30%. For comparison, at the height of the um, at the height of the Great Depression, unemployment only reached 24.9%. Also for comparison, the population of the United States is far greater. So there are going to be millions of people without work. In fact, this week we're expecting about 2.5 million to 3 million people to, uh, to be unemployed and file for unemployment. And in the midst of this, both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are incapable of providing the leadership that's necessary in two totally different ways. This is not to draw a false equivalence between the fecklessness of Donald Trump and the fecklessness of the leadership of the Democratic Party at this present moment. They're feckless in different ways. They're nefarious in different ways. One is magnitudes of order worse. Here we have Donald Trump. Donald Trump, along with Lloyd Blankfein, however the hell you pronounce that man's name, um, they are proposing proposing that we just call the herd, that we tried herd immunity, that we hurry up and get this done. And however many people die, they die. So long as we get people back into this economy. Now, there's something extremely disturbing about that when you consider the fact that when we say those words, herd immunity, when we say things like calling the herd, or when they say, let's get everyone back into, let's get everyone back to work. What they're saying, or rather what they're not saying is that that's going to cost the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. The assumption originally was that all of these people would be boomers. Uh, what they call in London, uh, the pensioners, right? People who are retired because originally it looked like this virus was going to only affect older people. But now as we get to America, we see that it is affecting younger people in quite a dramatic fashion. There's a 12 year old young girl here in Atlanta, Georgia, who is fighting for her life. Um, there are thousands um, of new cases in Florida because of the teenagers who are rather the college students who insisted on going to spring break. And not to mention, here's where the Democratic Party has some culpability. The suggestion last Tuesday, last Tuesday, the suggestion By the Joe Biden campaign. For everyone to just go out and vote because the CDC said it was fine, according to Simone Sanders, who was a senior advisor for the for the Biden campaign. Florida voted last Tuesday, and now we have a thousand new cases in a day. Confirmed cases, which means that there are far more cases that we don't even know about. So while the Republican Party under the leadership of Donald Trump is considering um, we can't call it genocide um, and we can't call it elder side because there are going to be young people who die. But they're willing to sacrifice millions of people on the altar. Of capitalism versus doing what is what is what is necessary to survive this and to maintain some semblance of an economy which is to provide every single American with a universal basic income so that they can sit their asses home and do work from home. Those who can work from home, the others can consume from home and you maintain some type of economy. The problem is, is that it's never been enough for Republicans and conservatives in particular. I'll get back to Democrats in a second. Don't you think for one second, I'm going to let those mother, those people off the hook. But it has never been enough for Republicans for this economy to thrive by putting money into the hands of working people. They have insisted that the only way for this economy to survive and thrive and grow 
is to put money in the hands of the wealthy, to bail out the banks in the times of crises. And when things are good, cut taxes and make sure that money stays at the top so that it will trickle down, which it has not trickled down one bit in the last 40 years since they've been trying this experiment. That was never enough because the solution now says that if we put money in the hands of every single family, if we send every family $2,000 a month, like Bernie Sanders is proposing. And, 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 and just as an aside, just as an aside, I don't personally care anything about Bernie Sanders beyond the same way I care for everyone as a human being. The reason I even mention his name is because his policies that he is, he's offering right now in this moment are quite literally the policies that will save the most lives as well as something of this economy. He's offering, he's proposing that we go for $2,000 a month. Every single month until this crisis is over to every adult or to uh, uh, to every person in this country, which we clearly can't afford because we're dropping a trillion dollars. Was What is it a day? They have they have agreed to drop a trillion dollars a day into the markets to shore up the markets a trillion dollars a day. And yet we're taking time to argue over whether or not we can afford to send every single person in this country $2,000 a month so that we can maintain some sense of an economy and so that people can stay home and not die. This week alone, two and a half million people are going to file for unemployment. We are looking at 30% unemployment rate. And the suggestion and the solution from the Republican Party is that, oh, f it, just go back into this environment where you could potentially die so that we can get this economy going again. That's the sociopathy of Republicans. The sociopathy of Democrats is that, well, we don't necessarily need to send that much money. We don't necessarily need to suspend any of these uh, a moratorium on any debts and any uh, foreclosures or any repossessions or evictions. We don't really need to fix the problem. All we need to do is give some kind of semblance, some kind of symbol. We need to get a, a signifier that we really care. And so we'll give them a, what, you know, what, what, what is the offer that uh, I don't even they don't even really have an offer on the table. They just know that they don't want the Republican offer, which I agree. The Republican offer was nothing but a handout to corporations. But where is the offer from the Republican, from the Democratic leadership? Matter of fact, where the hell is Democratic leadership right now? Where the hell is Joe Biden? If he is the presumptive nominee, why has he been missing in action for the last five now going on six days? Where is Nancy Pelosi with her proposal? It's not enough to oppose this really bad proposal from the Republican Party. Good. Don't don't vote for that. They they uh, Republican Party. They they could not move uh, forward because uh, they did not get cloture. They needed 60 votes. They did not get it. Thanks in part to Democrats all deciding to either vote against it or not to vote for it at all. But instead of focusing on a solution Liberals and Democrats are sitting around navel gazing over the fact that Bernie Sanders did not show up to vote against the bill when not voting for the bill is analogous, is equal, is equivalent. It's the same goddamn thing <laughs> as voting against it. But the media. Oh, my God. The media and the Democratic establishment, people who just in generally hate progressives. Right. They are more fixated. On stopping the progressive takeover of the Democratic Party than they are stopping the culling of the herd that is being presented by Donald Trump. So, I, I want to juxtapose this properly. Like there's sociopathy all around us. We're led by morons on both sides of the aisles uh, that are going to get us killed. Because while Donald Trump and Lloyd Blankston or Blankfine, whatever, it's like that's got to be like one of the greatest villainous names that I've ever heard in my life. Lloyd Blankfine. Like fiend, like uh, maybe it's Lord Blank fiend, which which is even better. Like the, I mean, the suggestion that he made on Twitter that we just send people back and try to create some sense of herd immunity is as fiendish as any movie plot I've ever seen. But I digress. While they are suggesting a po a pathway forward that's going to get hundreds of thousands of people killed, young and old, 
Democrats, instead of opposing that with all of their energy and their force, the media, CNN, NBC, CBS, all of these journalists who are who should be looking at this. Right. What's more? What is what is more important to you? Brilliant people in the media. The fact that the president of the United States and one of the richest and most powerful people in the world, Lloyd Blankfein, have suggested that we send people back into the public so that we can get this economy going again, meaning that there are going to be people, millions of people who die. Or the fact that Bernie Sanders did not show up to oppose a vote that not voting for is equivalent to being there and voting against it. You would think. That the story would be this mass genocide. Oh, I can't even call it genocide. What is it called when you uh, this culling of the herd? You would think that the thing that everyone would be talking about today is the culling of the herd that has just been proposed overnight by the president of the goddamn United States of America. But instead, our media infrastructure is pissing all over themselves because Bernie Sanders did something that they can use to weaponize against him. And again, I got to reiterate that I don't really give a damn about Bernie. I'm sorry to all the people who follow me who, who really, really love like you really love Bernie. But I'm pretty confident that none of us would care about Bernie at all if he had policies that were not helpful to us. And that's why this is so critical, because what he is proposing is what can save us in this moment. What he is proposing is going to help all of these people who have been who have lost their jobs. And will help them to stay home so that they don't get sick and die on top of the fact that they lost their jobs. But if you look at the outrage, if you look at the outrage from the media and from Democrats, people in power, people who who want to maintain their proximity to power, people who want to prop up Joe Biden, who just put out a minute long video in a minute, 20 seconds. He couldn't really string together a coherent minute and 20 seconds. Listen, I'm sorry. Did you actually don't don't take my word for it. You listen to this shit yourself. President Trump and Mitch McConnell are trying to put a corporate bailout ahead of millions of families. You know, it's families. It's simply wrong. We should be focusing on families. The White House and the United States Senate Republicans have proposed a $500 billion slush fund for corporations with almost no conditions. And you don't have to tell Americans where it's going to go for months. You don't have to explain what you did with it. The Trump administration could allow money to, for stock buybacks, for executive pay. Republicans, Republicans refuse to increase Social Security at the same time, to forgive student loans, to take the necessary steps to stop evictions, ensure food and nutrition for vulnerable families. Senator McConnell should immediately allow a bipartisan vote on aggressive measures to help small businesses, workers, communities, so they reflect what they need and so they can get moving so we can help them now. This is a time to help families, communities, and small businesses. People trying to pay their mortgages or their rent, student loans, urgent bills, they need help they shouldn't have to pay for a corporate handout before they get the help they need. They need the help now. That, that, that's what we've been waiting on. He's been missing five days. Five days. And this is the most coherent thing that they could pull together in five days. A minute long video. Where, where, where he's slurring his speech and you can listen, I, listen, listen, when the record is recorded, when the truth comes out, you are going to see that Joe Biden was not mentally fit to run for president. But the Democratic establishment poured everything into him to just push him along the way. But that's not even as important as everything else. What's what's happening right now? What's important about that is that in order to protect the Democratic establishment power structure. The Democratic establishment power structure has turned their guns on the only person out here that's proposing something that could save our lives and turn their guns away from the man who has just floated the idea of herd immunity. Where hundreds of thousands of people will die, potentially millions. I don't know if I can stress enough to you. How absurd both of these political parties are. In this moment, I'm sorry, I I honestly would like to 100 percent move away from electoral politics in the middle of this crisis, because the only thing that really matters is the fact that we have to survive. Right. We we, uh, I don't I don't would I would like I would prefer not to have 
to let this be something that we all have to pass through kind of like a kind of like a filter, maybe a minor filter, if not a great filter, just something that everyone has to pass through. And if you're strong enough, you can survive. And if you're not strong enough, you die. This is what the Republican Party, as well as the conservatives in the UK, this is what they are literally proposing in order to save capitalism. And instead of opposing that and embracing the policies that would save as many people as possible, there's literally nothing that Bernie Sanders has proposed that is not uniquely tuned to help everyone, as many people as possible, survive. I don't really care where it comes from. I would I mean, at this point, it would just be it would be so great if we had somebody else besides Bernie Sanders, because people have invested so much of their energy in hating him that they are willing to hate him, even though he's given them the thing that they need to survive. And instead of embracing these policies, the two thousand dollars a month, the moratorium on uh, bankruptcies, um, no, of uh, the moratorium on uh, foreclosures, the moratorium on evictions, the moratorium on uh, utility disconnections. Those are literally the things that we need to survive so people could stay home and not be forced to go through this minor filter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up great filter. But this is like a thing that every one of us is going to have to pass through because of the leadership of the Republican Party and because the Democratic Party is so damn interested and concerned about preserving their power from the progressive movement. That they're willing to turn away from the policies that will save as many people as possible. We have sociopaths and morons on both sides of the aisle. And to hell with all of them because they're going to get us killed. And to all the all these millions of people who just lost their jobs. Let me let me let me just. No, I don't have enough time I, after this music, after this break, we're going to come back and I'm going to talk to those people because I know unlike a lot of these elitists who are fine, they're just fine. They're not going to miss a beat, right? See, they're not going to miss a beat because their money was not predicated. They, didn't, they never had to really leave the house anyway. They're just fine. And they don't know what it's like to not know how you're going to feed your kids. To all of a sudden go from making great money to having no money. I want to talk to all of those people as soon as we get back from this, this patron party. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. All right. It's kind of hard to have a party these days, but I think that it is vitally necessary that we find some way somehow to party. Very special welcome and thank you to Matthew Sarola. Thank you for becoming a patron. Very special thank you and welcome to Nick Silva. Thank you for becoming a patron. Tara Jarrett, thank you so much for becoming a patron. Noah Isaiah Sims, thank you for becoming a patron. Jennifer Nally, thank you for becoming a patron. William Skirky, thank you for becoming a patron. Perry Rice, thank you for becoming a patron. Pam Bruzwitz, uh, Pam B, <laughs> thank you for becoming a patron. And Matt Pike, thank you so much for becoming a patron. You too can become a part of this prestigious and prodigious patron family by going to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show twice the content without any of the ads that you're going to hear right here. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Who, you know, sometimes I'm, I, I, you know, it's kind of good that I have that. Um, I didn't realize that putting the patron party right there would be somewhat of a therapeutic tool for me. Um, to to make help me dial it back when I'm ready to flip tables over um, this season in American politics is uniquely designed to turn me into something that I don't want to become. Um, well, I'll discuss that in the patron, <laughs> the patrons episode. Um, but the gaslighting, it is the gaslighting in the face of a global pandemic that drives me to rage. And all of these disingenuous hacks who are spinning things for cheap political points in the middle of a goddamn global pandemic. I swear to God. <laughs> we'll talk about it in the patrons episode. But what I want to focus on right now is a real human cost that is going on. Like we, we have yet to see the human cost in terms of lives. And I hope on everything, I pray on everything that all of us are wrong and that we have done enough to, to flatten the curve and that we are not going to see this exponential growth in in cases that are going to ultimately lead to death. Um, I don't know if that's the case. 
I think we have in America, we have fudged this so much so that um, we have some difficult days ahead. But what we do have right now are millions of people who just lost their jobs. And I don't know if you can appreciate what it's like to go from one day having everything that you need or at least, I mean, not everything that you want, but you're surviving. You know, the people who lost their jobs, they range from people who were making minimum wage all the way to people making a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars a year. People, people are really hurting right now and they don't quite know what they're going to do because once they sign up for uh, unemployment, they realize unemployment was never designed to actually help you stay afloat. It was designed to keep you chasing after the, the lowest paying job that you could possibly get. Right in Georgia, listen. I know I know the unemployment process quite well. I've had to, I had to go downtown and and sit in the room with everyone else who had uh, uh, lost their jobs, and then we're all looking around as they tell us how much trouble we're going to get in if we don't do this right, and if we don't file properly, and if you don't do it this way, you're going to get you're going to have to pay this money back, and if you don't do it this way, you're going to get in trouble for fraud. Right? They they spent they do this entire video. Right. They show you this video about how uh, if you don't do it right, that you're really stealing and we don't want to be thieves. And then you go through all the red tape, then you have to apply for jobs, three jobs a week, which is not not bad to apply for three jobs a week is nothing for a person who wants to get a job. But in an economy where there are no jobs, what are they supposed to do? And then. You have to apply for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you can't find jobs that match your qualifications. No, 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 no. The unemployment office wants you to apply for anything. So if you end up with a job as a barista, no offense to baristas, but you used to work in marketing, making six figures. And now the only job that you could find is one as a barista. Then that's what you have to take in this unemployment system. But guess what? We're in the middle of a crisis where there are no baristas right now. And so the problem that I faced when I lost two jobs within one year and had to file for unemployment is uniquely different than the problem that people are facing right now because there are no jobs. And so now not only are there no jobs to replace their income, unemployment insurance is woefully insufficient. It is not designed to help you even survive. And so now we have about two and a half to three million people who all of a sudden are faced with the grimmest realities because our political leadership cannot find a way to 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 uh, to ameliorate this crisis. In fact, they're going in the opposite direction, saying that, hey, no, let's just confront this thing head on by throwing everyone back into the workforce and those that live, live and those that die, die. If he dies, he dies. Rocky. That's that's really what we're up against. And I don't know if 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 Republicans in this case, because this is the sociopathy of the Republicans, like this is their this is their brand of 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 of, of sociopathy. That's it. I, there's really no better word for it than sociopathy is that they're willing to take the chance of killing hundreds of thousands of people to save an economy that if you really think about it, the sudden death of hundreds of thousands of people into the millions will not survive anyway. The economy is going to implode anyway, whether or not you push everybody back into the workforce and just let them be called and let the let it be survival of the fittest. The economy is going to implode anyway. But for the mere opportunity, if they could just have a 1% chance of, of, of salvaging the system through which they derived all of their wealth up until this point, if there's just a 1% chance that they could save it, even if it cost the lives of 2 million Americans, they're willing to do it. Meanwhile, Democrats can't really decide whether or not, you know, they should means test you to get some assistance. Right. Whether or not. Oh, well, you made one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year last year. So we're only going to give you five hundred dollars a month or thousand dollars a month or whatever the case may be. Oh, you don't make enough. You make too much. The, the, the means testing. We don't have time. Who is going to implement that? Who is going to implement that? In the middle of a goddamn pandemic. <laughs> OK. If you're waiting on the conclusion of that sentence, that's the thing. Who is going to implement a means test in the middle of a pandemic when people are struggling to just survive? See, here's a th- I'll talk about this in the patrons episode. Like well, this virus, this virus is is so efficient at exposing. 
exposing our country for what it really is. More so than other countries. More so than other countries. America. America is uniquely designed to be to, to suffer the most the, the maximum impact from this virus, both in terms of our economy and in the terms of actual lives, people dying. <laughs> oh man, oh man. And Democrats are sitting here worried about the fact of whether or not Bernie Sanders showed up to a procedural m- vote. <laughs> both parties will get us killed in this moment. And the problem is, is that we have to wait to November to vote these bastards out. But when November comes, those of us who are still alive. We need to mail in our ballots and vote every single one of them out. I don't care who you put in. Vote everybody in power. There might be five people. There might be maybe 10 in the entirety of the U in the entirety of D.C. In the House of Representatives, in the Senate, in the White House, maybe five people who are equipped to lead us in this moment. But it is not a single person in the establishment of the Democratic Party or in the rank and file of the Republican Party. Donald Trump is okay. He is a narcissistic megalomaniac who has no regard. He is a sociopath above everything else. He has no regard for the lives that he's getting ready to cost. This country, Uh, I guess I should finish the sentence. He has no regard. He doesn't care. Meanwhile, Democrats really just care about preserving their power. And nobody is doing anything. (laughs) Nobody is doing anything to to help two and a half million people who just lost their jobs. It's politics as usual in the face of the greatest crisis our country has faced in a generation. And if this plays out the way experts are saying, this will be the defining crisis of our nation, period. In fact, this has the potential to being being one of the most defining moments in our world's history. And Washington, D.C. is playing politics as usual. And as much as that sentence that I just said is used almost to the point of becoming a cliche, Washington, D.C. is playing politics as usual. The fact is, is that in this instance, it's going to get a lot of people killed. In this instance, it's going to have a lot of people starving, hungry, not knowing how they're going to feed their kids because this unemployment right now. The only thing that's helping these families out is the unemployment system. And I've been in it and I can tell you that it is an abysmal failure because it's never been designed to succeed on behalf of people who lost their jobs it works you'll get your check but when you look at that check it's going to be woefully insufficient i just think i just don't think people realize what two and a half to three million people really looks like in term and those are individuals right we're not even talking about their households see this is this system is changing whether you want it to or not, whether you try to preserve your power or not, be it political power or economic power, no matter what you do, this system is changing right underneath us. It is being forced to change. You could try to protect the capitalistic economy that we have by insisting and in, in, in actually pause, throw that entire sentence away. Everything I just said, just, I mean, don't throw it away, but I want to stop it. Here, here's the thing. <sighs> We can preserve our economy if we implement democratic socialism, if we implement universal basic income. We can save lives if we immediately implement Medicare for all and nationalize whatever we have to nationalize. Because the private health care industry has been designed to perform on the razor's edge. In other words, it's been designed to maximize profits by being. um pretty much on demand right uh instead of having a surplus of beds they made sure what what's what is time in time management or it it escapes me it's been a while since i was in an economics course but basically they only had enough materials enough beds there to make sure that they could fulfill the immediate demand they were never it, it, it was never designed to help this country in a crisis Because to be prepared for a crisis means that you would have to take away from the profit margin of the investors. 
to invest in preparation. Let me see if I can say that clearly. In other words, what it would have taken for us to be prepared for this crisis is maybe a few percentage points off of your profit margins for the quarter. But because we have been so obsessed with maximizing profit margins, we are completely unprepared in terms of our healthcare system. And so everything, everything has the potential of falling down right around us. All right, so I I think I'm going to cut it here and get ready to go over to the patrons-only episode. You can get access to that for like $3 a month. Um, Now, I know a lot of people, maybe I'll make a lower tier. I I, I don't know. I know a lot of people don't have jobs right now, so um, that's why I give as much as I can. I give you my all in the first 30 minutes so that you don't have to come to the patrons-only episode. Uh, But there are some things that I share in the patrons-only episode that I will not ever share publicly. Um, And I will just give you a teaser. Because we're still in capitalism, right? We haven't gotten rid of this shit yet. But here's a teaser. Um, it, it, it is the gaslighting. It is the gaslighting of Republicans, Donald Trump, conservatives. It's the gaslighting of Democrats, political operatives, consultants, the media. It is the gaslighting that's going to drive this country into a rage. Not just me. See, I thought it was just me. I was like, it, it, you know, it's the gaslighting that makes me hulk out and lose my shit. Right. But it's really it's not just me. It's a lot of Americans who have long seen through the bullshit. But because of better times, everyone just kind of stayed in their compartmentalized sections of America. Right. They say they stayed in their subgroup. You know, politics was over here and everybody was just arguing about it. And then uh, entertainment was over there and people who were, you know, upset at their jobs or whatever. They just, you know, they went home and got involved in the entertainment, the sports, the games, the video games, the, you know, whatever it was that kept our attention away from the issues, the underlying issues. Everybody stayed in their compartmentalized lanes, but now everything has collided and everything is about politics. And there are millions of people who are home right now. Who don't know how they're going to pay. See. I felt this urgency before this crisis. You can go back and listen to every, you know, listen to my most recent episodes before the crisis. Go back to January, right? This urgency of the moment has always been pressed upon me because I understood that poor people in this country could only tolerate it so much longer. Well, guess what? There are three million more people who are poor today. So. You do the math and tell me if your bullshit politics as usual is the best idea in the midst of a global pandemic. <laughs> ah, all right. Uh, patrons, you know what time it is. Uh, stay on board. I will talk to you immediately after this music. Everyone else, thanks so much for listening and I will see you tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon Show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. <laughs>